Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for participating in the fourth quarter 2023 earnings conference call of Malco Resorts and Entertainment Limited. At this time, all participants are in a listen-only mode. After the call, we will conduct a question and answer session. Today's conference is being recorded. I would now like to turn the call over to Ms. Jenny Kim, Senior Vice President, Group Treasurer of Malco Resort and Entertainment Limited. Thank you, Operator, and thank you all for joining us today for our fourth quarter 2023 earnings call. On the call are Lawrence Ho, Jeff Davis, Evan Winkler, and our property presidents in Macau, Manila, and Cyprus. Before we get started, please note that today's discussion may contain forward-looking statements made under the safe harbor provision of federal securities laws. Our actual results may differ from our anticipated results. In addition, we may discuss non-GAAP measures, the definition and reconciliation of each of these measures to the most comparable GAAP financial measures are included in the earnings release. Finally, please note that our supplementary earnings slides are posted on our investor relations website. With that, I'll turn it over to Mr. Lauren Poe. Thank you, Jeannie, and thank you for joining us today. Many of you may already be aware that David Sis, our COO of Macau, has resigned. We'll be conducting a thorough search process to identify and appoint a high-caliber individual to steer our business forward in Macau. In the interim, Ev and I will be actively involved in the day-to-day -day operations of our Macau properties. As we move forward, our focus is to ensure that Melco is leading the market in all aspects of our business through innovation and collaboration. With this in mind, we're also adding to our leadership team with new appointments in gaming operations, retail, hotels, and food and beverage. We expect these new additions to the leadership team and management changes will strengthen us as a team to secure a stronger and more competitive future. Turning back to our results. Macau continues to demonstrate its extraordinary growth potential and has shown resilience despite China's uncertain macroeconomic outlook. Visitation to Macau during this month's Chinese New Year holiday period was close to 2019 levels, and the number of visitors from China exceeded 2019. Our mass GGR and Macau CEO property EBITDA during this CNY holiday period was meaningfully higher than 2019 levels. 2023 was a year of post-pandemic recovery and the opening of new properties, the City of Dreams Mediterranean and Studio City Phase 2. The epic hotel tower at Studio, at Studio City Phase 2 offers our patrons a luxury hotel product which had not been available at Studio City before, with two three-bedroom suites and villas. It is attracting a high-end customer base to the property and driving gaming demand with the help of the new high-limit gaming area that opened in December on the second floor of the Epic Tower. The ADT generated by this customer base are at levels that had not been seen at Studio City previously, and Studio City is reaching record levels of daily mass and slot GGR. 2024 is set to be another exciting year for us. Among the various ongoing events and projects, our residency concert series at Studio City is scheduled to start in March. We've started construction of the Cineplex at Studio City Phase 2, and we aim to bring back our award-winning show, The House of Dancing Water, by the end of the year. We will also start renovations on the Countdown Hotel to bring a new high-end hotel, luxury hotel offering to our premium mass customers. In the Philippines, City of Dreams Manila continues to generate solid earnings with significant market share gains in mass table games and slots. City of Dreams Mediterranean in Cyprus continues to be impacted by the conflict in Israel, and is, it is uncertain how long this will last. However, we have seen some signs of improving demand so far this year. So with that, I'll turn the call over to Jeff to go through some of the numbers. Thank you, Lawrence. Our group-wide adjusted property EBITDA for the fourth quarter of 2023 was approximately $303 million. Luck adjusted group-wide property EBITDA for the fourth quarter of 2023 came in at $320 million, 
a favorable win rate had a positive impact on COD Manila of around 3 million, while unfavorable win rates at COD Macau, Studio City, and Cyprus had a negative impact of approximately 20 million. Details of these adjustments can be found in the supplementary earnings slides posted on our investor relations website. Macau OPEX increased to approximately 2.6 million per day in the first quarter of 2024 from approximately 2.5 million per day in the third quarter in line with guidance. This was primarily due to the full quarter impact of the W Macau at Studio City, which opened in early September 2023. Turning to our balance sheet, we repaid another 200 million of our revolving credit facilities during the fourth quarter of 2023 and repurchased 100 million of bonds at Studio City via a cash tender. On a consolidated basis, we reduced debt by a total of 950 million over the course of 2023, and we will continue to focus on debt reduction into 2024. As of December 31st, 2023, we had around 1.4 billion of consolidated cash on hand. Melco, excluding its operations at Studio City, the Philippines, and Cyprus, accounted for around $750 million. Of this, approximately $125 million was restricted as collateral required for concession-related guarantees issued to the Macau government. Another notable movement in our balance sheet in 4Q23 is the impairment of Altira by approximately $200 million. Altira has faced some challenges with the change in the VIP segment, and we continue to work through the repositioning of the property. Altira broke even in 4Q23, and we expect performance to improve in 2024. As we normally do, we'll give you some guidance on non-operating line items for the upcoming first quarter of 2024. Total depreciation and amortization expense is expected to be approximately 135 to 140 million, Corporate expense is expected to come in at approximately 20 million, and consolidated net interest expense is expected to be approximately 125 to 130 million. This includes finance liability interest of around 6 million relating to fees and payable, uh, fees payable in relation to the Macau government gaming concession and the Cyprus gaming license and finance lease interest of approximately 6 million relating to City of Dreams Manila. That concludes our prepared remarks. Operator, back to you for the Q&A. Thank you. If you wish to ask a question, you will need to press star 1 and 1 on your telephone and wait for your name to be announced. To withdraw your question, please press star 1 and 1 again. Please stand by while we compile the Q&A roster. And we will take our first question. Your first question comes from the line of George Choi from City. Please go ahead. Your line is open. Thank you very much uh, for taking my question. Hi, Lawrence. Hi, Jeff. And hi, Evan. Um, I have a couple of uh, questions, if I may. Um, firstly, um, the numbers are suggesting that you guys have lost market share in 2023. I'm just wondering what you guys plan to do to regain your fair uh, market share. Uh, and my second question is on capital uh, allocation. Uh, would you please remind us what your capital allocation priorities are? Uh, is there any chance of a dividend resumption? Uh, that's all I have. Uh, thank you very much. All right. Hi, George. It's Lawrence. So, you know, I think clearly, um, you know, we, we had lost share in 2023, and I think that's part of the reason for our management change as well. Um, you know, I think Post-COVID, you know, we did, you know, David did a great job for us during COVID in terms of trying to survive. But, you know, post-COVID, I guess, you know, we continue to, um, you know, cut too deep to the bone in terms of our operating expenditure and how we conduct our business. And, um, you know, I, I'm glad that, you know, Chinese New Year, we've had a very strong Chinese New Year so far. And, you know, as I said in the prepared remarks, we're, you know, substantially above 2019 levels. Our mass GGR was up, 
you know, over 22% from 2019 Chinese New Year. So things are moving in the right direction, even without um, the recent management changes. So City of Dreams invented the premium mass segment over 10 years ago. And so the goal for us is to really reclaim the crown in the premium mass sector. And in order to do that, you know, I think we need to work together as a team and, and with some of the new recent appointments to, you know, improve the quality of our offering. Um, you know, I think, frankly, post-COVID, you know, looking around, um, you know, we really did, you know, cut way too much of our offering out. And I think that's why we lost some share from that basis. Um, so I think that is being addressed. We have done it, you know, a million times in the past, and, you know, we've enjoyed having the pole position in premium mass for a very long time. So I think the goal is to really reclaim that. Um, I guess your second and third questions were more... Well, I think capital allocation is our number one goal this year. So I'll let Jeff elaborate. Our number one goal continues to be debt reduction. So I think that's you know our, our main focus. Of course, we have our maintenance capex and some of the stuff maybe Jeff can... So clearly the mandate is uh, debt reduction is the number one priority uh, from a capital allocation standpoint. Um, at the same time, we are looking for capital light uh, opportunities to expand the portfolio. Um, but uh, yeah, the, the, the key laser focus will be on uh, debt reduction. Well, I think in, in line with that as well, you know, I think, I think frankly, nobody has any other than perhaps Galaxy that none of the operators really have any major, major CapEx projects in Macau because all the land has been used up. Um, I think for us, you know, as we continue to improve the product offering, we'll look at areas that we can, um, you know, minor projects that can improve those, but I wouldn't say there are any major CapEx on the horizon. And um, with regards to our Macau government investment tender um, commitment, you know, I think out of the six, um, we've always had, you know, I think it's public knowledge that we had the lowest amount. And I'm pleased to say that we were the only one last year that fulfilled our um, our full amount. And and so you know, I think going forward, even with the additional uh, 20% um, addition, um, we'll, 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 you know, we're comfortably below everybody else. That's very good, Carla. Thank you very much. Thank you. We will take our next question. Your next question comes from the line of Ricardo Chigiela from Deutsche Bank. Please go ahead. Your line is open. Hey, guys. Uh, thank you so much for taking my question. I was hoping you could comment on your OPEX expectations going forward, given that uh, from your recent comments, you guys are probably going to enhance, uh, you know, some of the services for your guests. So how how would, should we be thinking about, you know, OPEX for the balance of the year? Hi, it's Jeff. I'll, I'll, I'll take the question uh, and thank you for the question. So uh, as you know, for uh, for the fourth quarter, we came in at uh, uh, 2.6 million per day. Uh, and, um, you know, going forward, we had highlighted that uh, with the opening of the House, House of Dancing Water by the end of the year, uh, that's likely to increase our daily OPEX by about uh, 100,000 a day. Um, in relation to some of the, um, uh, the measures that, that Lawrence mentioned about um, be some customer-centric uh, enhancements that we're considering, I think over the course of 2024, but not immediately, um, we have somewhere in the neighborhood of another 100,000 per day of, of enhancements. Got it. Perfect. Uh, if I follow up, may follow up with uh, an additional question, I know that you guys, you know, classify your premium mass customers in several tiers, and that you know you highlighted some encouraging data regarding you know recent performance in uh, the Golden Week. Is there a tier within your premium mass that is doing slightly better or ahead than the rest of ones? Uh, are they, you know, back to pre-pandemic levels, perhaps a little bit higher? How should we think about, you know, the different, 
you know, tiers that make up your premium mass business? Um, hey, Ricardo. So I think, you know, the, you know, the, the, the recovery has been pretty broad based when you refer to premium mass, you know, of course, you know, infrastructure, you know, although visitation from um, China is rising, you know, infrastructure isn't totally back yet. So I think, if anything, that's affecting more of the um, general mass or grind mass. But with regards to premium mass, um, it's pretty across the board in terms of the various sectors that we have. So I wouldn't say there is one or two sectors that is, um, you know, over, over indexing or under indexing. Got it. Thank you. Thank you. We will take our next question. Your next question comes from the line of John Decree from CBRE. Please go ahead. Your line is open. <clears throat> Hi, uh, everyone. Thank you for taking my questions. Uh, maybe just to start with a housekeeping item for Jeff. Um, I didn't. If I missed it, I apologize. Did you give or could you give? Uh, CapEx expectations for 2024? Sure. Um, uh, you didn't miss it. Uh, for 2024, uh, we're looking at CapEx of approximately 360 to $375 million. Great. Thanks, Jeff. And then uh, maybe to, maybe to uh, revisit um, earlier question a little bit, some of the, the comment you had made around um, pursuing some asset light opportunities to expand the portfolio. Curious if you can elaborate a little bit on that, and I guess you know we kind of think in, in the context um, of some larger markets that, that some of your peers and global casino operators are looking at, and particularly the UAE is is very topical right now. So curious if there's uh, other markets or anything you can kind of elaborate on things that you're looking at externally. Well, I think it's it's a bit early as well. So you know, I think given our you know we're we're still climbing out of our COVID hole. Um, you know, I think we're looking at some like smaller potential projects, but nothing I think that's you know ready to be announced. Um, but in terms of the longer term, um, bigger projects like UAE or the Thailand, you know, I think we're kicking the tires like everybody else. Um, but as we learn from the Japan process, these things usually take a you know it's a it's a multi year process. That's fair. Okay. Thank you, Lawrence. Thanks, Jeff. Thank you. We will take our next question. Your next question comes from the line of Carl Choi from Bank of America. Please go ahead. Your line is open. Hi. Thank you. Um, two questions. Uh, first, coming back to the question of the new appointments um, that you mentioned, uh, could you elaborate a little bit on, you know, apart from obviously GGR market share, what are some of the key sort of uh, metrics, um, sort of KPIs that uh, that you're trying, you're hoping that the new operations people that uh, you're bringing in can achieve this year? And second, can you just talk a bit about the competitive environment? I think on the last call. Uh, it was mentioned that reinvestment rate was a little bit elevated, perhaps in relation to the fact that premium mass has recovered a little bit uh, faster. Uh, so what's the latest in terms of reinvestment rate? And uh, also just curious, uh, some of your folks are, you know, some of your peers are rolling out the RFID uh, tables. Uh, is there any plan to do so over at, um, at your portfolio as well? Thanks. Hey, Carl. Um, you know, I think maybe I'll, I'll take it and everyone wants to add some color. Um, our, you know, our, our our FID tables are coming next month, so we're quite excited to to have them. Um, but again, it's going to be a rolling process. You know, I think we're getting them for the first time. There's going to be a learning curve, um, but you know, I think we're excited to see um, to to make use of the full potential of these RFID tables. Um, and I think you know, in in terms of reinvestment, um, you know the. The, the market is very competitive. I think if you look at our competitors' results as well, you know, I think you can see it. Um, so I think for us, as part of the new plan is, you know, how do we, you know, Melco was always the innovator in terms of product offerings and the service level and being guest-centric. So it's about how do we um, spend the reinvestment wisely. 
um, rather than you know just purely giving things away. Um, so yeah, I think that's you know I think if you look at the appointments that we have, you know we we are reestablishing our strategic uh, analytics and strategic marketing unit. Um, you know we're adding in retail, we're adding in hotel and food and beverage. These are all guest centric, um, guest facing experiences that we really care about. Um, so I think that will you know we've it's. It's been a um, great solution for us in the past. I think we'll continue to work in the future. I don't know, Evan, want to? Uh, <clears throat> sure. To continue on what Lawrence uh, articulated, we brought in three senior hires. Um, All Adada is really focused on how we're looking at our, our gaming operations and how do we really get uh, greater efficiency in terms of our spend there, um, where we're allocating our resource, how we're driving the floor, floor layouts, and so we're looking at that to, um, again, not just improve our GGR, but also improve some of our efficiency and allocations here uh, as we look at player reinvestment, et cetera. On the uh, retail front, uh, obviously, we have a, a luxury player at COD and a luxury retail footprint. Um, it's an area that is a focus of improvement. Um, we feel that bringing in someone who's got deep uh, long-term relationships with these key luxury brands is going to help us enhance that offering. Uh, that probably is not a today, tomorrow thing, but as we continue to evolve the retail experience, uh, both at COD and SC. Um, and then we brought in uh, a VP of Hotel F&B at COD to just make sure that from a guest and customer experience that we are uh, leading the market once again uh, across all fronts um, in terms of picking up on some of the OPEX likely to get uh, – someone similar at some point here in the future at SC as we look to um, enhance our, uh, our bench strength in those areas. Uh, in addition, as Lawrence articulated, we've reoriented our sales force under a central point so that we have a uh, more centralized focus around the customer experience and customer journey. Um, and we're also doing that in our premium uh, areas as well. Uh, and so I think from uh, top to bottom, uh, the view here is, is that we've reoriented, again, back to being uh, customer-centric in our approach uh, and making sure that we are leading and innovating across the premium category. Um, the belief is that's going to help us regain the market share, but obviously along the way we want to make sure that we're doing it uh, in a way that is uh, efficient in terms of how we're allocating the resources to those efforts. Great, the color is very helpful. Thanks. Thank you. We will take our next question. Your next question comes from the line of Joe Graff from JP Morgan. Please go ahead. Your line is open. Uh, hi, Lawrence. Hi, Jeff. Hi, Evan. Um, you obviously talked, uh, as others have, uh, about a strong Chinese New Year's. Uh, which is encouraging. C can you talk about, and maybe you did, and I, I, I missed it, but I don't think you did. Can you talk about, you know, your views on how you performed in January in relation to the market, and uh, as well uh, as in the balance in the balance of February outside of Chinese New Year's? You can maybe talk about, um, you know, GGR as a percentage of 2019, or EBITDA per day, or, or some performance metric outside of, uh, you know, what's been undoubtedly a strong Chinese New Year period. Hey Joe, you know I think our, you know, the 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 results do you know fluctuate month to month, and um, you know I think clearly the the reason that we wanted to make a management change at this time was that, you know we felt uh you know we were losing share, and you know more important to us is not so much the top line market share that has never really been the the case that we cared about. It was really about EBITDA, um, but. Yeah, you know, I think month to month it, it it does fluctuate. You know, you know, even premium direct VIP, you know, it, with the win rate, you know, seriously affects that. But I think more importantly, and and, and something actually I was surprised that nobody has really um, been too focused on was the additional of the two new Chinese cities that will start accepting visitors on March third. Um, you know, both Xi'an and Qingdao are two massive cities with over 10 million people and with high disposable income. So I'm actually really excited about that. And I think with our, um, you know, guest-centric, um, you know, and, and the restructuring that we're doing, 
um, you know, I think we should be able to capture a lot of that going forward with the growth. And also, don't forget, there hasn't been any new individual traveler, um, you know, IBS cities in the last 15, 20 years. So, if anything, this is a very strong sign of things to come. Um, great, that's helpful, Lawrence. And then um, the, the search that uh, that's underway right now to, to replace David, um, when do you think you'll – that search will be complete, and you'll have somebody, uh, whether that's an external, I'm presuming it's an external person, but when that person could be on board. Well, you know, I think for us, the, you know, the, the with the new additions and the restructuring, you know, that's probably going to keep us busy for the next couple of months. Um, you know, I think both Evan and I are, are going to be much more actively involved uh, during that time. I think it's important that we want to find the right candidate um, going forward. You know, we had a great eight-year run with David, um, but I think, you know, the next candidate, you know, I think really needs to, you know, follow the DNA of Malco and what we were, what made us great all the years before, which was, you know, focused on luxury and, um, you know, amazing, extraordinary guest experiences. Great. Thank you. Thank you. If there are no further questions, I would like to hand back to Jenny Kim for closing remarks. Thank you, Operator, and thank you for participating in our call today. We look forward to speaking with you again next quarter. Thank you. This concludes today's conference call. Thank you for participating. You may now disconnect. <laughs>